What's up guys, Brody here from 533 and today we're going to be continuing the build guide on all the frames we sell here at 533. Today's build video is going to be on the Light Switch V2 Ultra, one of our most popular 5 inch racing frames and after its most recent update with the arm locking mechanism, it is so much better, more durable and it doesn't have the issue where the arms will start to go together but I will show you guys how to build it and yeah, let's get straight into it. All right, so this is where you're going to be given when you get a Light Switch V2 Ultra Frame Kit. You're going to be given five five millimeter Light Switch V2 arms. And the reason why you're given five is because since they are five millimeter arms, they are less durable, but they are a lot lighter, like a ton lighter. So you're given five of those just in case you break one super early on. You go ahead and get those out. And then you are also given this which has the rest of your frame you've got your <clears throat> you got your bottom plate your mid plate top plate your little rigid mid pieces your two types of standoffs your short and long standoffs and all your hardware let's get this out all right so now that you've got all your parts out you are going to want to start off by getting your mid plate and you'll know this is your mid plate because you have your press nuts sitting on top and you're going to want to find the four longest screws that you are given and they're silver I don't know if he's out there like this but see how these are two different links you're gonna to want to find the longer ones now if you're trying to build the lightest frame possible and you know you have a super small stack and usually you can't fit it with HD zero but some people have if you know you have a lot of small parts you can use the shorter stack and make it even lighter but if um, but most stacks are too big to even fit that so once you get your four longest screws you're going to want to set those right here okay i forgot to mention that you're going to get these stack nuts whenever you order it but you are going to get four of them uh instead of using these black ones i don't usually like using these ones because they're made of plastic and they break super easily so you can actually just go ahead and take those out of your parts of hardware and chuck them so you're going to get your mid plate, and again this is your mid plate because it has the press nuts, and you're going to get your long stack screws, and you're going to push those through your 20 by 20 mounting holes, your 20 by 20 are your inside ones, that's the only mounting pattern you're given. So you're going to put these in, and you have to make sure you do this step first, this is your first step. So you're just going to put those on. And then you're going to... And then you're going to repeat that process on all four stack screws. Okay, so now that you have all your stack screws in and they're tied down, do you want to give them a little twist just to make sure because once you put the rest of your frame together, you're not going to be able to go back to this step without disassembling it. So you're going to want to make sure these are on as tight as you can get them. And then your next step is you're going to get your two rigid plates that look exactly like this. And you're going to put them in these holes that are on. And you'll see once you fit the pattern to it. Now sometimes these are a struggle to put in just because the, like, see how it's not sinking completely. One trick i found is you can get the back end of your driver and gently tap this in right here. I want to make sure it stays lined up and everything, not go sideways, and then just try and get the rest of it in. If you are having trouble with this and you can't get it to go all the way in like that, like see how there's still a little bit of space, don't worry about it because whenever you put your arm screws in, it's going to flatten it the rest of the way out. Just do the same thing on the other side. Just like that. See, that one went all the way in, but I still haven't gotten this one all the way in. And, uh, yeah. But, yeah. We'll just go ahead and move on to the next step. You're going to want to get your bottom plate. You'll know this is your bottom plate because it... I mean, you only have two plates left. First off, it's this one and this one, and this one's your bottom plate, this one's your top plate. This one has a little indention, so you know that. So you get your bottom plate, and you're going to put it where the side that has the countersunk, these little divots, 
you're going to want that going up. Like if this is fa if the rest of your frame is facing down, like your stack screws are facing down, you're gonna want that side going up, just like so. So it'll look exactly like this. And then you are going to want to get this plate on, and you gotta make sure that your little things are facing straight up at you. Not bent at all, or this plate will not go on. And then that also might be a little bit of a struggle. As you can see, I'm struggling a little bit. I can only get it like halfway in. And I'm just gonna tap this one in as well. All right, so now you should have something that looks like this. That is where we're at. Okay, your next step is you're going to get your black medium long screws. They look exactly like this, they're countersunk. You shouldn't have any ones that are this size. Like there's just four of them. They're medium sized and that's the ones you want. You're gonna set those off to the side for a second. The only other screws you have are your shorter standoff screws, which are these silver ones that are countersunk. It's your or stack screws, I mean. You're gonna wanna put those off to the side because we're not using them in this build. You have your four top plate screws. These are for your top plate, of course. They have this little thing on top. And then you have your two squish, squish screws, the squish your plates together. Okay, so we're going to get one of our arms and you can actually see right now the new arm locking design that we've got here. It looks completely different than what it did look like, but you're gonna fit it in. So if it's facing this way, then we're gonna put it in like this to where the little, this little clasp is facing this indention part right here, or this rigid mid plate. That way it hooks onto that. You want you want this right here. You want this right here to hook on to your rigid mid plate. You're just gonna put that in. Just like so. And you should have a little click. And then you just line these holes up just like that. And then you're gonna put your black arm screw in. Get your two mil. I also should say that you are only gonna need a two mil for this. And, well, you're going to need a 2 mil and a 2.5 to get your top plate screws in. Those do require a 2.5. And, yeah, you're just going to repeat that on all four sides. I recommend going across first, going in like this one, this one, this one, this one working in cross pattern sections just so you don't have one side accidentally lift up. And I'd like to, for y'all to see how the new locking design works. So now that we have two next to each other, that's what it's going to look like. That's your new locking design. shouldn't tighten these screws all the way down. You definitely do not want to tighten them all the way down because then it's going to be really hard to get your squish blade screws in. If you are struggling at all to get that in, to push it all the way in, then I would just tap it in lightly with your the back end of your driver. That's always worked. If you, like on any of our frames, if you're having a little bit of a hard time getting it, then you can either get a carbon file, but I know most people don't have a carbon file just laying around at home, so you can just try your best to tap to the back of it. So your next step is you're going to get these two small screws. There's only two of them that look identical and they're countersunk and these are your squish plate screws and they're gonna go right here and right here. These just really squish the plate in and I wouldn't tighten your arm screws down before putting these in. I would tighten these all the way down and then put tighten down all your arm screws because otherwise it's gonna be really hard to line your arms up for this. Now I would tighten, so tighten these two down and then go around and tighten all four of your arm screws. should have something that looks just like this. Okay, your next step, and this one's a little weird. It's kind of like the 
back screws, but you're going to take all eight of your standoffs and you have to find the four longest. So if you do go with the longer stack screws, you have to use the longer standoffs and vice versa. If you use the short stack screws, you use, you don't have to, but you use the shorter standoffs. So I can already tell that these ones are the shorter ones because they match up and they just look short. But once you find your four long ones, set those aside. And just bump them up against each other. See which ones are smaller, which ones are bigger. And you are going to put these on your arm screws, just all four of your arm screws. Okay, and your final step is you're going to get your top plate, and you are going to, I, I do not believe that the orientation on your top plate matters just because the front and the back of the light switch V2 Ultra actually matters. Oh wait, no, it does, it does matter. So the difference is, if you see right here from the side, you might be able to tell, the stack is offset in one direction, and on this, if you're looking at it from right here, you have more space up here than you do back here. So that means this is going to be your back and this is going to be your front because you need more room for your camera. Or that's what I've always done is I always give my camera more room just so it has a little bit more squish if you ever hit something head on. So this is your front and then this is your back. Now I'm just gonna hand tighten these in. It, you have your light switch V2 Ultra frame. That's what it looks like. But yeah. Alright, so there you have it. That's how you build your light switch V2 Ultra. I hope that helped everybody in building their light switch V2 Ultra at home. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave those in the comment section. If you want to see any of this stuff that I post, it's Voshi FPV on all socials, I'm on everything. If you want to see any of that, and of course this is on Evan's channel in that playlist and you can see all the build videos that we've done so far. More are to come, I'm just working through them one at a time so we can get through all the frames, but yeah. I will see you guys in the next one.